Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's find the vector equation of an example line like this. Here we have a line that has two points on it, point 1 and point 2, they're known. Then we take any old arbitrary point called P, which has of course a coordinates x, y, z. Notice we have a parallel vector v, which is not yet defined, which runs parallel to the line. And then we have three vectors. We have the position vector to point 1, the position vector to point 2, and the position vector to any old arbitrary point on the line. Find the vector equation. The first thing we want to do is find the v vector. The v vector can be found by simply subtracting point 2 from point 1 for the magnitudes of the x, y, and z component of the v vector. In other words, we can say that the v vector can be defined as 2 minus 1 in the i direction, 8 minus 2 in the j direction, and 5 minus 3 in the k direction. This will now give us a vector that points from point 1 to point 2, which is the vector v. v is then equal to 1i plus 6j plus 2k. Now that we have the parallel vector to the line, the next thing we should do is find the vector from any, any point, let's take point 1, to point right there. Let's call that the a vector. Now notice that the a vector is longer than the v vector, but it's parallel to the v vector, which means all we need to do is to equate the a vector to the v vector is we need a parameter like the t parameter. We can then write that the a vector is equal to t times the v vector, which means it's equal to 1 times t in the i direction, plus 6 times t in the j direction, plus 2 times t in the k direction. The next thing we want to do is write the r vector in terms of the r1 vector and the a vector. Because I'm going to take point 1, I can now say that the r vector is equal to the sum of the position vector to point 1 plus the vector from point 1 to any arbitrary point on the line x, y, z. Like this. Which means we could write this as follows. We can write this as follows. We can write this as the r vector is equal to the position vector to point 1 plus t times the v vector. And really, what we can also do is we can write the v vector in terms of r1 and r2. We can say and the v vector can be written as the r2 vector minus the r1 vector. Because if we take r2 minus r1, we get the v vector back. Which means we can write the r vector, the position vector to any arbitrary point on the line, as being the sum of the r1 vector plus t times the v vector, which can be written as the r2 vector minus the r1 vector. Notice we have an r1 here, we have an r1 there, so let's get rid of the parentheses. This cannot be written as r is equal to the r1 vector plus t times the r2 vector minus t times the r1 vector. Then we can combine these two terms and write this as r vector is equal to 1 minus t times the r1 vector plus t times the r2 vector. And now we have an equation that describes the line in terms of the r vector, which can be described as in terms of the the vector to point 1, the vector to point 2, and then the parameter that compares the a vector to the v vector. Remember, a and v are parallel to one another, but then a vector represents the direction, or I should say the vector from any one of our points, in this case point 1, to the arbitrary point on the line. If you now want to plug in what r1 and r2 are equal to, then you have the actual equation for this particular example. So let's go ahead and do that. It means in this example, we can say that the r vector is equal to 1 minus t, 1 minus t times the r1 vector, that would be times, uh, let's see, let's just write it like this, times 1 in the i direction, plus 2 in the j direction, plus 3 in the k direction. That's, so that's 1 minus t times the r1 vector, plus t times, plus t times the r2 vector, which can be found over here, which is 2 in the i direction, plus 8 in the j direction, and plus 5 in the k direction. And this then becomes the 
the vectorial equation of this particular line. Because this gives us the direction or the vector to the point 1, this is, gives us the vector to point 2. Now since we have 1 minus t here, it is better to keep a parameter somewhere between 1 and 0. So it's advised that in this particular case, we'll let 0 be smaller or equal to t and smaller or equal to 1, so that this value 1 minus t will always be something between 1 and 0. And that's how we define a line with a vector equation. And that's how it's done.